Welcome to Synced On Air. It's Angelique Robb here, and today I have Michael Bernier from Michael Bernier Design. Yes. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm doing very well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. It's been a while since we met back at the Landscape Expo in Anaheim, That's what, right. in November last year? November so, last um, year. yeah. So, landscape architect by trade, um, been in the business for quite a while, haven't you? Uh, well, I've been. I started actually. Gosh, I went back to school for landscape architecture uh, in 2005. So, gosh, that's a coming on 20 years. <laughs> and I started practicing about 2008, and then started my own business in 2012. So, okay, it, it was a process. It took a while to get get things rolling because it was a mid career change. Uh, I used to be in advertising and marketing. And found it to be soulless and empty. And oh. <laughs> but, uh, hey. uh, <laughs> but well, no, it's you know what it, it actually it was very creative, uh, and it really pushed me. And the, the, the beautiful thing is, is the things that I learned from being a creative director, uh, I've been able to translate into being a really good uh, landscape architect. Um, okay. And mostly on the way of dealing with my clients, how to handle my clients, and how to handle my team. So okay. it's, uh, I mean, I've been creative my whole life. So the design part, of course, translated once I learned all the, the and, and there was a lot to learn, you know, plants, materials, how it all comes together. But uh, there was a lot I was able to transfer over, but it was a, it was a mid-career uh, shift and it did not happen overnight. <laughs> no. Well, and so I saw, I think your degree was in graphic design. Is that what you started in? Yeah, okay. in a whole other life, a whole other century, uh, I started in graphic design. This was just to give you an idea, and I hate to I hate to throw this out there, but to give you an idea how long ago it was, this was before computers were being used. <laughs> <laughs> so it was still an art form. Actually, you know, it's funny, that's interesting because it was still an art form. I was using my hands. We were dealing with materials that, you know, it was it was physical. You had to draw, paint, design type set wow. of thing. And then computers okay. came in and obviously changed everything. And while that's been a very valuable tool to expedite and, and obviously amp up creativity, now we've got AI to deal with, uh, but that's a whole other subject. Um, but what happened was I was seeing how everything, it was so digital and it was so, uh, it, it everything was on a, you know, to this size, but let me put the, there, we, it was to this okay. size. It was no longer a, an art form that I was able to tangibly work with. And so uh -huh. I had this moment where I was just like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. I needed to do something real. But you liked it up until then. You you liked the more physical art form. Well, of... my, you know, my favorite part was uh, okay. was uh, creating commercials, TV commercials. OK, because there was so many different aspects to it and bringing so many elements in. Uh, you know, writers, uh, the technical crew, and it was a very physical act because it was happening in real time and space. Okay. And it also helped me to learn how to tell a story. And uh, but what I what I was struggling with was who I was working for. And I won't mention the global gigantic uh, <laughs> high fructose no corn need, syrup no need to uh, do that. company yeah. that I was working for. <laughs> uh, well, I, I was working for an agency that that was our main client. And I just I was like, I have got to put my energy and effort into something that, that I feel good about, that matters to me. And I've always okay. been an environmentalist and someone who loves nature and working. The idea of taking my creative skills and working with nature just to me seemed like the perfect marriage. So awesome. that's how it happened. <laughs> OK, well, good. Well, I love to hear the story of how people came into the industry um, because it is so unique. And a, a lot of people moved into the industry. Some people grew up in it. But okay. um, some people discovered along the way, too. So, um, well, great. So you said 2005, you went back to school to yeah. do landscape architecture. And yeah. then it took you a while to, to open up your practice or to learn everything. Well, um, yeah, it did take a while. Uh, it, in, yeah, the in fact, I, I actually started my business with a friend I met in landscape architecture school who was also in marketing. And we both said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start a business together. I was a creative director up in Seattle, and I said, this is just not working. So I moved back to Los Angeles, where I'm from, and uh, and just said, hey, let's let's do this. And we literally jumped in with two feet. And uh, 
we're no longer together. We parted ways pretty early, but I've been doing it on my own now for uh, 11, almost 12 years. So awesome. Okay. And what do you enjoy so much about it? Uh, well, the process is, is great. Uh, there's just so that, that was one of the things that I love so much about. There's so many elements to it that have to come together and work. And now instead of working with just colors and fonts and, you know, a message, I'm dealing with live plants that, you know, that, that has to be addressed. This, it's, this thing's alive. So we yeah. have to deal with where that's going to go and the other materials and how everything works together. And um, so I love that part. And of course, you know, when a client sees the finished product and I can see how much it moves them physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. that's the other thing about advertising. You know, if you're lucky, you get someone to buy something, you know, whereas now it's like, I get to see how someone can now uh, use the space and there's an emotional connection. And, you know, one of my, my personal mission is to connect people back to nature. And that's the way to do it is to get people outside. And yeah. even if it's just their backyard, right? Yeah. So, yeah. and then of course, there's nothing more satisfying than uh, putting uh, a brand new kangaroo paw on the ground. And within minutes, a hummingbird comes in and starts going to town on it. And it's <laughs> like, I'm helping nature. And to me, there's no, nothing better. So, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and you've also, so when I met you, you had a booth at the Landscape Expo. Um, hopefully I said that right. And you were also giving a talk and stuff. And so this is, a, a, I guess, another part of what you're offering now. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about that, because that's well, very new, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very new. Uh, the, you know, being in the industry now for a dozen or so years, uh, i not that I've seen everything, but I feel like I've seen everything. And you work with so many different people and contractors and clients and whatnot. And I saw a very big uh, gap between uh, how uh, contractors get their work done and how they communicate and how, uh, and I don't mean everybody, I'm talking about the majority, of course, there's always okay. exceptions, and, okay. and clients and how they work and what they want and how to best deal with them. And I saw this gigantic, just like these hills here, chasm. <laughs> in between. Uh, and I was always the babysitter. I was always the, the bridge, which is fine because that's okay. what that's my job. That's what I, I earned my hard earned few dollars for is to make sure that the I understand what the client wants and to make sure that the contractor understands that and it gets done the way it's supposed to. Um, and it's two and I, separate perspectives sometimes, isn't it? Oh, it's so. not only is it two, it's like two different planets. <laughs> it's like they speak different languages. They see the world completely different. It's like Mars and Venus. And so um, I saw an opportunity, a necessity, actually, to uh, to help bridge that gap and to to introduce to contractors. Look, you guys are great at what you do, you know, regardless of the trade, whether it's painting, concrete, um, you know, carpentry or planting irrigation you name whatever it is you do you're very good at it and the key is is you have to open take a step back and open up and see the whole project from the client's perspective hmm. that's the only way you're actually going to be able to uh to really step up your business and make uh, make a, a a difference instead of just being a tradesman that you're hired you know to get the work done you can actually have an, a bigger impact on the project and and grow your business and i think to do that uh i think understanding design mm -hmm. is the key to that because not only do you you also you obviously have to learn people skills which uh, i'll just say it most contractors are don't really have good people skills just throwing it out there and again not everybody my experience though for several um is you have to learn people skills uh, but it, because you have to be able to express what you are trying to accomplish. And the same thing from the, the client side, if you can walk up to a client and not only understand their vision, but help them expand and create the vision. And mm -hmm. the only way to do that is to understand design. So when I sit, when I work with a client, um, I don't just go there and say, okay, tell me what you want. And I'm writing all this down. I try to understand them better and get a sense of what their vision is, even beyond what they actually want and need. 
because uh, mm -hmm. that's what they're looking at. Well, I want this and I want this and I need this and I've got this much to spend. My job yeah. is actually to say, well, how about this? Have you thought about that? Have you? Um, and uh, it's normally I, I, I have this different background on here, but normally I have a background of my one of my favorite projects that I took the simple request of, hey, uh, I've got grass between my house and my pool and some stepping stones and I want something to go in between there. And I want, I, and I want my dog to stop tracking mud into the house. That was the, that okay, was the, that was the remit. That yeah, was, yeah. Yeah. That was the scope. Well, I took what was maybe a 15 to $20,000 spruce up uh, and turned it into a like 85 or $90,000 outdoor living room and kitchen. Wow. Okay. Because I was able to show him. Upsell. Possible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ultimately it's upselling, but you can't upsell unless you can make an emotional connection. Yeah. with clients. So uh, what I did is I, and what you saw at the, uh, at the show was I was, la I launched a course called uh, the basics of landscape design for professionals. So you can mm -hmm. not only uh, learn design and how to use it in, in landscape projects, which obviously ups, you know, it, it increases your value and your billability. I mean, you can bill for that, uh, but you, you, you easily can grow the, the scope of the project from there. Mm -hmm. And in the course, I also teach some very basic people skills, like how to present yourself better, how to listen to the client better, how to create a presentation that sells. Um, okay. it's, it's all about presentation. It's all about, yeah. hey, here's, here's this incredible vision. What do you think? Oh, my God, we love it. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, I just did yeah. it. I just started a new project this week where I did that. So what did um took what they wanted and turned it into something much more is that what you mean well in this particular case uh they're, 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 they were the perfect clients they knew what they wanted and they trusted me <laughs> okay those are, the, those are the best clients so <laughs> but but then, you know, i'm glad i said that because the key ingredient you're you know we, uh, when you're in the business of, of being a contractor or a designer for that matter or even someone who sells a product let's say you're selling fire pits or whatever the the client has an idea what they want and but they could they could call anybody look i need this wall built and they and you know there's thousands of masons out there who can do the job they're going to hire the person that they trust and that they like and they want to work with so yeah. the more that you can present yourself as that person who is likable understandable and gets them uh you're establishing trust because ultimately you're in the business of trust not building brick walls um yeah. The, the more that your client trusts you, the more that you're going to be able to uh, just increase your business. Period. Well, and I think, yeah, something that you said made me think of not only um, trust, but to build that trust, you have to actually listen to them, understand what they say, and translate that into something that's a vision. And so that's... You know what, what's funny, just a little story about my experience is the reason I became a landscape designer is because I wanted somebody to do my back garden <laughs> and they pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, you don't want that. You want this. And I was like, no. <laughs> well, so. I'm so glad you mentioned that because, <laughs> you know, to be a really good designer and ultimately the builder. Um, you don't want to just take and be an order taker like the client want. I want, you know, privacy screens here. I want a fire pit over here. Right. And that's why understanding design is so important, because what you're going to say, what you you can look at the list of what they want. And then you take your expertise and say, OK, I understand what you want. And let me show you how that's going to work better for you. You yes. have to be able to tell them what because you're the pro. Right. Yeah. So, um, and that's what, uh, that, that's, that's what I teach in the course. And that's what I do every day with, a, with a, my, oh, to sort of answer your question about this recent project, um, what, what it really is more about is understanding what they want and they, what they need. Like, what is, what are you going to use this space for? Start there. Yeah. Get, it's, it's called empathy. Like, I want to feel and understand what your lifestyle is like. How many people live here? Do you have kids? Do you want to entertain dogs? You know, you name it everything fits into that equation. And then you take that information and you say, okay, given what I understand about what you want, here's what I think is going to be best. 
And yeah. then you share it. And I, I don't like to use the word sell because you're really not selling. You're basically saying, this is what I think is best. And yeah. of course, everybody's got budgets they need to work with. But I almost, there's almost never been a time where I haven't been able to, to show them more. And, and they've been open to it and signed off on it. Very rarely does someone say, no, I, this is all I've got. And this is what I'm so good. And I say, okay, well, then let's working with that number. Let's make the best of it. Mm -hmm. And again, good design will show you that because most contractors, and again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just <laughs> reflecting back what my experience has been. You're, you're, what you, when you go into a project, it's like, what can I get done? How quick can I get done? And how mm -hmm. fast can I get paid and move on to the next project? OK, mm -hmm. so you kind of have to let go of that mentality. I mean, you still need to do that to run your business efficiently, of course, but mm -hmm. you need to take a step back and go, what what's possible here? Uh, how well, can we optimize this? And I think that, you know, true to why we started Synced is, you know, by connecting design, build and maintain, you end up with a a higher bar of a project Absolutely. And, and clients. And, and so I think that even if they understand the design a bit better, even you don't have to do the design to even understand it better. You know, understanding it better is like a step better. Absolutely. Not even yeah. um, questioning it. Yeah. You can still you can still hire a designer, uh, and and you may or may not actually do the installation yourself. But understanding the process and understanding yeah. how it all works that in itself is worth you know. Like, I, I believe that people are going to do well, first of all, make it let me make a distinction. The first course that I launched was for professionals. I'm okay. also developing one for do it yourselfers, oh, which okay. ultimately will benefit the, the industry, because the more educated uh, the clients are, the, the people who do the pro, uh, have the homes, the better, the, the easier it makes our job. You know, and yeah. like, like you just said, for, for a homeowner to understand what it takes, because let, let, let's be honest, most homeowners don't think landscape landscaping at all is is cost what it costs like exactly I, I yeah no i think everybody comes across that yeah, yeah. and yeah. so the more they understand the more they know the more they realize because like if you're going to build a house of course you're going to hire an architect right mm -hmm. and then they think well plants well let's just get my gardener out here and we'll throw some plants in the ground it's like no there's so many things you have to take into uh, account and that's why we, we do what we do it's and, true yeah and, and i and, think that's what you were attracted to when you when you because you came to my booth yeah yeah and you're like what's this yeah. <laughs> and we had the best conversation and that's why i love what you're doing at synced because um you know there's there's opposite ends of the of the spectrum there's landscape contractors there's landscape architects but what you do is you bring it all together and you tell the story and you and you make sure that people understand it's it's all integrated it's well it, and i also think that if you um let's say you know one person does the design another person is building it there's always going to be something that okay is this level this level isn't exactly as we thought it would be you know and you have to make some changes i i've done some designs where the house builder built the garden and they changed a few decisions here or there makes the job feel so different to totally. what it would have felt like and it's not major changes but it it impacted it you know negatively quite badly you know so I, yeah. again that's where i see you know the more um let's say landscape architects understand construction methods and vice versa the better we can you know talk through the plans, make decisions and come out with a quality product at the end. So, and so Absolutely. just a clarification. So at your design business, are you supervising the construction? Are you um, hiring people to build? What? Do, how does it work in your design shop? Yeah, great question. Uh, and it, to, to what you just said, it's the perfect scenario is when we as designers have control over everything and we know that we don't have control over anything in reality so <laughs> that's why communication is so important uh i there was a time when i was managing everything the the construction the landscape installation everything and i found that it was just uh it was just more than i was willing to take on and i wanted to move back into a design role 
Uh, and okay. I think that was, it was around that same time as when I got inspired to do the course, because I knew that there was still that gap that needed to be filled. So oh. for example, this current project I'm working on, um, I, I, I found a contractor, or I have a pool of contractors that I work with, and they're right. building the concrete walls, uh, the fire pit, uh, they're building the deck, and they are directly contracted with the client, because that way, okay. they're, they're on the hook, it's their responsibility. Um, okay. That's the other thing. Accountability is something that is just massively missing in this business. And uh, my cat just walked in and is trying to get my attention. So I parked <laughs> now. So I'm, I'm actually on an interview here. So hang on. All right. Uh, so uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, where was I? Uh, but what I do is that I, I also have a foreman and, and landscape crews that I work, that I manage directly because okay. that's something that I feel much more comfortable about. Uh, you know, just, I, I, I get this, I can handle this and I can fix anything that isn't going right. Um, okay. If someone does something pouring concrete and something goes wrong, I'm, I can't fix it. So and I, I want to make sure the right person's in charge for that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. so I, yeah, so I still manage, you know, uh, most landscape installations. Okay. Uh, and that, again, it gives me control. I mean, any designer who's done a project knows that when they do a plan, that even though that plan is a is, is really a guideline, when you're on site and you're placing plans and stuff, everything changes, or not everything, but a lot changes. Yeah, uh, there's always adjustments. So I like to I like to have hands on for that. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, good. Yeah, no, it sounds like you have a good viewpoint of you know, the industry and working different ways because you've worked, you know, fully control and then and outsourcing some of it. So that gives you, yeah, a different perspective on how to how contractors can work with clients. And so you've just launched, I think you were just launching it last November, were you? Well, because yeah, think that's outside. I, inter I, okay, I, inter yeah. <laughs> I introduced it at the show. And yeah, okay, the talk okay. that I gave was basically a an expanded version of what you and I are talking about here. Yeah. Um, and it, I, I the talk, the title of the talk is Think Like a Client, Design Like a Pro. Because, you know, yes. everybody from contractors to designers can learn something from, uh, I believe, can learn something from the course. So we did our first course in the winter uh, with a handful of, uh, of contractors. And I'm now kind of revising things and just sharpening it up before I launch the next ones. I don't have a, okay. a date yet, but I'll be launching another one. The goal is... Um, uh, I'm doing live right now, like a, like a Zoom call. There's a session okay. eight weeks, eight. I think it's eight weeks right now where I do mm -hmm. weekly live sessions with videos and homework and things like that. And ultimately, once I get it nailed down and perfected, I'm going to record the whole thing and have it live online so anybody can take it anytime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's uh, that. That's the plan. So, like I said, the for professionals, which has the the very significant component of how to work with clients better. And then I'm doing the uh, do-it-yourself version where it'll be from the homeowner's perspective of, okay, this is our house. We have $10,000. What can we do with it? Yeah. And I'm going to walk them through the process of here's how you plan it out. And Only uh, $10,000. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I'm dealing with that right now with a client. Uh, that only has ten thousand dollars, and I'm just like, gosh, I I really okay. want to help you. <laughs> I know, so, a patio. But, but but that's the whole point is that you know we're uh, especially with we don't know what's happening with the economy. There's all kinds of talk about all kinds of things, but there's going to be more people going. Okay, honey, let's go to Home Depot and do this ourselves. And we we all know what that looks like if they don't know what they're doing, right? And yeah. this, so this is my way of helping them uh, get a plan. You know, like create a plan and do it, at least do something right for that matter. Uh, and they can take whatever they get from the course or not get it. And and again, at the end of the day, at least they're more educated. They may go, yeah. you know what? We don't know what we're doing. Let's hire that contractor after all. But they're going to yeah. be a lot more educated and informed in doing so. And so. maybe even be able to cost it up a bit more themselves because I think you know we all get that well the the pavers are fifty dollars a square foot so why are you charging me this you know um because pavers are such a small part of the whole construction piece yeah, yeah. right right so the first how did the first um course go then 
Very good. Said. Well, I mean, it was it was the first one, so there was uh, uh -huh. learning uh, from it, uh, a lot of bumps in the road. But uh, you know, I, I had to I had to kind of swallow some pride and take a step back and go, okay, this we're we're learning from this. And, yeah. uh, and I, you know, I learned a lot from working with these guys too. They, they taught me a lot. I, you know, it was, it was a chance for me to understand what their wants and needs are too. And that yeah. way they can improve on the course as well. Cause I oh, find as good. a designer, uh, especially after, you know, starting many, many years ago in graphic design and then getting into advertising, I see things from a, a, a very, very high perspective. Like, you know, I'm looking at things that the average, even even a really good contractor is not going to need to understand about design. So okay. it was about tweaking the language, um, you know, ah. because I, I base everything on principles, the principles of design that can be utilized, whether you're designing a chair, a house, a car, a piece of clothing or a landscape. Okay. Okay. And I found that I need to make these a lot more specific <laughs> to where do you put that Italian Cyprus, you know, uh, and where do you not put it? So that, that's the thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I learned a lot as well. <laughs> well, you know, it takes a lot to say that too, that you have to rethink it and, and tweak things. And so yeah, it'll be even better right the second time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, we're in tweak mode right now. Uh, pretty, pretty significant tweak, which is why I'm waiting to release it as a recorded product. I want to get it right before... I, you know, do it that way. So awesome. Well, yeah. On on the road to quality. Good. <laughs> I'm all about quality. <laughs> That's well, why we awesome. do what we do. Yeah. Well, great. I think this has been a, a great introduction in uh, introduction to your your background and your business and also what you're going to be doing in the future. So yeah. do you want to tell us about your so your your business is called Think Outside the Course. Yeah, the the uh, I have uh, two two websites, MichaelBerniersDesign.com, which is my design business. Yeah, and then um, ThinkOutside.Design, and I, I'm even wearing the shirt. Oh, good. ThinkOutside.Design, which is the platform where uh, is the like home base for all the educational products that I'm creating. Okay, and that was we literally so the professional like and that. the DIY. Yeah, we'll right now, the only thing that's on there is for professionals. And okay. as we expand the courses, it's going to go even more. And in fact, one of the things I learned, going back to the idea of too big of a perspective versus being more specific, I'm actually going to start doing workshops that are much smaller. And they're oh. like one, one episode of an hour, hour and a half, where people can go on, they're much lower price. And uh, for like, I don't know, I haven't come up with the exact price yet, but for like $30, $40, they can come on and learn a specific thing. And what we're doing right now, the one we're working on at the moment, especially here in Southern California, which even though we had a lot of rain this winter, we normally don't. And we're, you know, we still have a drought situation. So I'm in the process of ripping a lawn out and replacing it with a drought tolerant garden. And so okay. that's our first workshop is how to, how to take out a lawn and replace it with a drought tolerant garden. Oh, neat. Yeah. Little bite-sized chunks of, yeah. Yeah. The design. Yeah. Little, yeah. little bite-sized. And that, that way people get to know me a little bit better. They understand the material and then they can say, yeah, I'm ready for the, the full Monty and yeah. uh, can do the bigger course. But we, that, that was part of the process also was, so how can we, how can we give them little bits and pieces to, to chew on while we're developing the bigger course? <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. And you'll have to Thank keep you. us posted and um, yeah, show off some of your work sometime. Absolutely. I'd so, love that. Well, great. Well, thanks, Michael, for being on the show and stay tuned for Amy's summary of this interview in Spanish. Sí, sí, muchas gracias. <laughs> <laughs>